I like your pants. <laughs> and we both have copper. I'm not copper anymore, but. Um, I'll start off by saying I'm really proud of our team tonight. We did not have a great first, first half. Um, gave them momentum going into halftime, and then came out and played a lot better in the second half and a really good fourth quarter. So I'm just really, really proud. Lauren Swan was huge tonight. Did not play in the first half. As a freshman, she could have hung her head. Came out firing, doing what she does, and just really proud of what she did. Without her doing that, without Jada making big shots, um, without Brea carrying us for most of the game and playing smart with foul trouble, we don't win this game. So a really good team effort. And we're young, so there was times when we were kind of getting a little chippy and complaining or blaming, and I just, I got it. I got on them. I'm usually not like super, but I got on them one time out, and then they came out and flipped it. So I'm proud that we kind of went like this, went back like this. So those are big culture moments where you learn how to win with some adversity. So proud of us. Um, the turnovers, you know, they've been a thing the first few games. And a lot of them, it seemed like, you know, like Jada said, it was trying to pass inside, and they were just putting their hands up and knocking it down. So, I mean, what, what do they ha you have to do? Yeah, we are turning the ball over way too much. Like the, most of the teams I've coached, we've always been really good at taking care of the ball. We always have a more positive assist to turnover ratio. <laughs> right now, it's that that's flipped. We're probably averaging like 20 a game and probably 14 assists. So we need to be at 20 assists and like this team probably be at 13 turnovers. But like when we get more experience, I like to have us at like 10 or under. Um, that's way too many. We will not win a lot of games in the Big 12 if we don't correct that. So a couple areas to correct. Um, we have to have the ability to execute offense. So when you don't execute and people are doing the wrong thing, one is waiting for an on ball. One is like passing the ball because it's supposed to be like an elbow catch. So there's some miscommunications like that. So getting in our playbooks, learning the plays, and having some accountability in that, that's on me for sure, making them know that stuff. Um, other things are the angles and where we're passing. Cannot pass way above the free throw line, extend it into the post. It is a, and then on the wrong side, so you're at the top. Defense is 90% on the top, like playing three quarter. So those are bad turnovers. Second thing, I think just in co like collaboration, the post players holding off their defense and the guards are getting the angle to pass. Those are all fundamentals. So every day we are working on post passing, like we have to. It's the, we aren't good at that yet. Um, the intentions are good, but the execution is not good. So that will improve. And I really felt like we improved it. And then, then I was watching the other game. I was like, maybe we haven't. And like Jada had five. Jada can't have five, and she's a primary ball hand. She needs to be at two. And then, you know, we can't have Jaws probably averaging three a game. Monte is averaging three a game. Like, and some of that is also fundamentals. If you're going in under control, out of control, and you're running people over, we can't have a turnover game off an offensive foul. So we're working on jump stopping, being under control, power finishes, not like running to lane layups. Like, they're low percentage, low efficiency shots. So on me, the passing every day, the fundamentals to get our skill better. So we don't do that like a travel or offensive foul. Cannot have those. And if we can cut, we need to be, we're probably at, our skill set's probably around 15 right now, but we need to be at 12 or 13. But we're not at 12 or 13 ready yet. <laughs> we're going to be more like 15, 16, but not 21. What you saw from, from Lauren during the recruiting process is she could be a guard that, that could get Pearl Chad. Absolutely. She's a shooter. She's, I'd say, our best shooter. Right now, I think just for her, she's a freshman. So like um, today, a couple of times she was making up her own play, but I was okay. <laughs> she was mostly back door, but she ran to the ball, but she was hot. Like so, some of that I could live with. Um, but I think as a as a rookie or freshman, understanding that if you still take that back, we can get you on the reversal. Like you know. But I think the team did a good job of finding her. Um, she is a good shooter. She does it every day. If you watch her execution of her shot and her footwork, her feet are always set. And it's the same execution every time. So she's a consistent shooter. But what I like about her is that she's got dog in her. She has always been an underdog. Remember, this is the kid that signed late and bet on herself. So her senior year, she had all very, very small school offers. She said, mm -mm, I'm better. I'm going to go to a big time school. And so she waited it out. It was like the only one of the best players that waited out. And that's a risk. You could get hurt. You may not get better offers. You may lose the offers you have. She bet on Lauren. Lauren Swan bet on Lauren Swan. And then she came out and got way more offers in the spring and ended up signing big where she should. So, um, and then took a leap of faith, came from all of New York's out here. And she is a mama's baby. So if I have her, her mom comes a lot and stuff, but those were big risks, but she's always betting on herself. She's always been the underdog and, and it's been good for her.
And she loves it. She's in the gym every night. I get pictures and stuff from people like, oh, I saw your player over there. Or my friend's kids will come and take their kids to shoot. And they'll be like, oh, guess who's here? She'll be in like pajama pants shooting. So she loves it. She wants it. Now it's us getting her fit, getting her in shape to sustain more minutes. And then um, she has the ability. She's pretty fast if you watch her. If you watch her run and stuff, she's going to end up being a really good defender. It's just going to take us a year or maybe a couple more months. You know, it's, it's different in high school, you know? season's loss, how did it feel to beat UNLV? It felt good because they kicked our butts. They, they whooped us up and down around the floor uh, last year. I mean, decisively. We had a better team last year, but we had a lot going on, and we did not play better. So we had, ex like, a lot more talent. Think about how much scoring we've lost from that team. We've lost, like, 16, 30, like, almost 50 points from last year. I'm not even including Hillel and Esmer. No, we've lost more than that. We've lost like 70 points. Yeah, Which because... Probably 80 points. Yeah, well, them and then KG, Maya, like, so we've lost all of our scoring, like 97% of our scoring. And less talent, less talented one-on-one -on -one individual players and a much better team. So that tells you a lot. But the big loss for, okay, so this turnover number, with Helena Playa, we don't have this because she was so experienced and she was such a high level, high IQ player. She really made people around her better and took a lot of pressure off Sky, Jada, and like uh, made really good decisions with the ball and then the offense. So we're naturally going to turn the ball over a little bit more with not having her. But can we find another Helena Playa, please? alluded to it, but like this team likes each other a lot. A lot. More, especially yeah. when you compare it to maybe the last couple seasons. You just talk about the team chemistry. Yeah, you know, make it that way. Yeah, it's so much better. Like our locker room is a good place. You still have some personalities. You got to manage a little bit, but everybody's good people. There is no. Um, I mean, everybody has their cliques. They hang out with the people. They hang out with their roommates and stuff. But there is love in the locker room. There is um, um, caring about each other. They have um, cohesiveness and chemistry, and it's showing more and more. You know, if you would have told me last year, ISIS would be a captain, I'd be like. Mm. No, Jade, I knew she'd eventually be one. Um, but we have, like, good young leaderships that are evolving into leaders. Like, leader, like, Jade has leadership qualities, but she's learning what it is to lead older players or her peers and learning to do it effectively. So she's growing every day. Isis is growing every day. And it looks different, and they lead in different ways, but it's effective together. In the locker room, it's good. I think they're all, like, sisters. They, they hang out. Like, it's just... Um, I'm not saying they don't fight sometimes, but it's like um, there is a respect and care and everybody's pulling in the right direction. I think before we had like two people pulling here, one person here. Like we don't have that. So we have a, a team that's pulling together that will make mistakes together. I got on them in the game and kind of yelled at them all. And then they, they could have like without chemistry or culture, they would have been like, I don't know if I'm right. You know, like they came together and figured it out. And I was proud. That was a growth moment. So we got better today. But the chemistry and culture and having good people and, um, like, just good kids, it makes a big difference. Like, you may win games. Like, on paper, you may look like you're going to win more. You may have someone score 30 or something. But in the end, you don't win with a bad culture or bad teammates. You don't. And I think when you have you have learned you got to feed your eagles and you got to jump on that bus. So if not, you get left behind. So, like, we're on the bus and we're rolling. We're hitting some speed bumps. Having some detours, but hopefully we'll, you know, <laughs> we'll um, climb. You mentioned that they were kind of sniping at each other a bit. Was that anything that had happened before? No. Yeah, I mean, like, it happens in games, but I think um, when things get hard, it gets hard. It's easy to be like, well, you reached, and, and you're in the backcourt, and I need to help you. No, but then I said, hey, you did it too. You complained about it, you did it. Like, it's just like, I think just pointing out, but that's just immaturity, and it's young. It's being young, and, when, and it's stress. It's how people handle stress. So I am a very, I don't really like get out of control. It's my personality. But it's how I handle stress in every aspect of life. Like I'm not, I don't get too high or too low. That's just me. Now, like Salvo's like, <laughs> and Anthony, like they're really like, that's just who you are. So when things are difficult, I think your real character comes out. And it doesn't help if like, if I'm on like level 10, like the team's on level 10. So it's same with teammates. Like you got to learn how to like, um, ignite the group and like set some fire, but then like keep people like like calm and like confident, 
and ready. And I think when, when players aren't, when you're not playing good, it's easy to like blame on someone because you're stressed. So I think that that's just a youth and immaturity. But like those are growth moments. Like you can flip it back. Last year we wouldn't have been able to flip it. We would have been then having a meeting in the locker room talking about dumb stuff after the game. It didn't matter. She waited two, two years, now she hasn't missed from three. I mean, yeah. the growth there has been insane. Can you just talk about what you've seen from her? How excited you are that she's finally gotten this moment that she's waited so long for? I'm really excited and proud of Montea. She's went through a lot. Like, I mean, I don't know a lot of players, like, you know, you, you hurt your, you lose your mom. It's like you're, like, raised you, like you're only really close person in the family. And then after that, you tear your ACL. First injury ever. That, that's a lot for a kid. A, a, 18 year olds a lot and it was devastating for her and like she hit rock, rock bottom in a while and she's like stuck with it and got better and has had to find a way to cope through things and it's been it hasn't been easy I've watched the whole process I've known her a long time and um I promised her mom and during the recruiting process one of the reasons why she came with that I'd take care of her so I really have like a soft spot for Montana and like a really um I will I will not let her fail and so in any aspect so um, just proud of her and how she never gave up. There was times when she wanted to give up, and she's like worked on her shot, worked on all so many things to get back. And then she's at times it was hard to keep motivated, stay motivated. So the work is went up, and she's still, we haven't seen the best Montea yet. She's still getting comfortable, confident, figuring it out, like playing different positions, playing the guard, playing the post. But I'm proud of her. Um, she's so smart. She knows every play. Um, she does a lot of things that don't show up on the stat sheet, so she's going to be a solid player and and help us. And I'm glad that her. I'm glad she's making those threes, because the last thing I want is her to be working on it for two years and then like not hitting them. So it's good that she's seeing the results of that. She's not going to be someone that goes out and takes 15 shots. A lot like Sam Thomas in the sense she's going to take the good shots. She's not going to force it. But today she was fighting and pursuing rebounds. She was getting some block shots. She does all those little things. She's a good teammate, a great person. And just love coaching her. So I'm, I'm very proud of Montea. Um, Sky hasn't been scoring as much lately, but she had five assists tonight. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, she, she's not a big assist player usually. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I told her, I was like, yeah, a quarter of our assists. Um, no, I think that, but that's what I love about Sky. Like, it wasn't her best night. She's got, we got to teach her when and where to drive and give her some more options for that show we're on film. But she's worked so hard to get stronger, like better, worked on her shot. And like, we're not even seeing that now. She's got such a great three-point shot. But I, I love the fact that in the past, if she wasn't uh, making shots, she wouldn't have done anything else. So I'm proud of her. She made her free throws. She got rebounds. She figured out she got five assists and two steals. So she's figuring out how to do other things because it's not all predicated on scoring. And Sky wouldn't have been able to do that last year. Like her scoring will come. Um, her shots will come. She'll get threes. I don't even know if she took a three tonight, did she? Yeah, yeah I mean, she's a great three-point shooter, so i got to find ways to show her like she has that instead of just driving all the time. And we got to continue to work fundamentals with her about driving on balance. Um, but now you look at her, she's going right sometimes. She's going left and go back, so it goes back to right. She wouldn't have done that last year. And so she's going to be fine. And just like Jada, people were like, oh, you're worried. She's at three games. She wasn't shooting a great percentage. Came into this game at 20%, 0% from three. But it takes one game to get you out of that. So I don't call it a slump. It's just like, okay, when you put in the work, that, that it, you know, the shots will go. And she puts in so much work. So tonight, four for 10, three for six, four for four. We're not talking about it anymore. And six is her turnovers we have to take down, but like, or like cut down. But she still had a solid game. She's our primary ball handler. So um, Jada's, uh, Jada's going to be great. We've talked about the fouls all day long, but Brea has been nearing a double-double in every game so far this season. Like, she's playing lights out, out of her mind. Just talk about Brea, you know, her growth from last season has been insane. So much. I mean, Bre okay, so today she got in the locker room, she got Thief, because she had, oh, we had her down as four, four steals, but three. And we were like, take it, huh? Yeah, so we had her for four. We were like, take a picture, save it. Brea, you've never had you've never had four steals. And she was like, yeah, she was celebrating. And she's like, how am I going to almost average a double-double? <laughs> and it was kind of funny. She keeps on getting nine rebounds. And the last game she fouled, so I ran someone over, pushed them over to get that 10, but they didn't count them. Um, but she's just a bucket for us right now. She's gotten so much better. I mean, four for seven and then four for five, and that's with congestion and double and triple teams. 
I mean, she's a bucket inside. She's confident. She's feeling good. She's playing well. I'm, I'm proud of her because she's gotten stronger in the off season. <laughs> we were looking at a video last year at, at um, UNLV. She was like, God, you could barely see me. I was so skinny because she had lost a ton of weight, but she's gotten her strength back. She feels good. She's playing good. Her hands are phenomenal. Um, so I, I don't know. She's doing great. I think Torin came in. She gave up off offensive rebound, but she had a solid she had a solid post move or didn't make it. I think hit her free throws. Like Jordan gave us good minutes. I wish I could have gave her more minutes. It was hard though, because with small guards, we needed to have like more of a versatile four. And and then Jaw, like we need Jaw to be good. I mean, Jaw had four rebounds. It wasn't her best night. Had some silly fouls. But we need Jaw to come give us a spark off the bench. She she should average ten points and she should average five, six, seven rebounds. And she's capable. So just keeping her her um, consistent and not too high or too low or not too emotional and upset when she makes a foul, it's okay. So like teaching her through those moments, but she's, she's young too. She's basically, she's a sophomore, but like she's just getting experience. So she's gotta learn to pay, play through things. So these are, we're teaching all the time in different ways for different reasons. And I think, Mon, and I think uh, Paulina did really good. Paulina kept us in shooting the threes in the first half. We don't stay in the game without her doing that. So I was proud of her making them, and um, she hit some tough shots. I thought she played solid defense. I thought she had a tough assignment. Um, Jackson's fast, and Jackson's a, a fifth year, more experienced, really good in transition. I thought she made her have a tough time to take some tough pull-up jumpers. So I think Paulina was solid today. She's also another steady person that doesn't get too high and too low, and it's, it's, it's good for our young players to have people like that. I'll take this three-point shooting percentage. I don't know if we're going to see that too often, but thanks to Lauren. I was like, 50, we shot better from the three than the two. That's a first this year. And then, like, the free throws, I'm proud of the free throws because we've been working on free throws. So the thing that we have to cut down is, I mean, allowing 16 offensive rebounds is brutal. That's bad. So turnovers, boxing out, a little bit better in transition defense. This was going to be a better three-point shooting team because last year you said that wasn't going to be this team's deal. Um, I mean, we're not going to sustain 52%. I mean, we may hopefully, but doubt it. Um, I think better three-point shooting team than last year, but Caitlin was a really good three-point shooter. I think that now we have, we're less athletic, for sure, because they were more, a lot more athletic in the perimeter than we are. So on the perimeter, they had three really good athletes. Like, we're not super athletic or big, but Paulina gives us a good shooting ability. Lauren, Monte, when she's hitting their shots, Jade has improved her shots. So I think we should be better this year from the three. We should. And, and Jada's numbers, I don't know, Jada's not going to be 25%. Jada needs to be, you know, she needs to be in the 35% she needs to. I think Lauren could be probably 40% three-point shooter. I think Paulina can be 38 to 40% 40, 40 three-point shooter. If they do that, it's going to open up the inside for us and open up Brea. And then Sky is a good shooter. I think Sky, yeah, so I think we will be because Sky could also has improved her shot. So that's my expectation now. We'll see. <laughs> and they should get open shots because Bray is a force right now inside. So if Bray continues to play like she's doing, that's going to force double teams and they're going to get open shots. So that's how it should be. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks, you guys. Have a good night. Thanks for coming.